whole new world out there. Am I right? I'm not leaving the house very much, but when I do, I want to follow the rules. So I went to my good friends at Cricut, and what do you know? They have a free pattern for everyone to use. So I thought I would make it and give you guys a tutorial so that you can sew it too. And the tutorial is really great if you've been following my channel for a zillion years or if you're brand new to sewing and like you're dusting off your sewing machine because desperate times call for desperate measures. I'm gonna walk you through each and every step really slowly, really methodically, so anybody with a sewing machine can make this. Speaking of which, I'm gonna be using my Cricut Maker. The Cricut Maker machine cuts the fabric for you, so the machine is gonna cut all of my pieces, but if you do not have a Cricut Maker, but you have an Explore Air tube or any of the previous, um, cutting machines, you can use the same project file to cut out cardstock, and then you will have a pattern piece, so that's kind of cool. And then if you don't have a Cricut or like at all, that's fine too. They have a downloadable pattern on their blog. And then finally, if you cannot sew, they also on their blog have a no sew option. So Cricut has really covered everybody with these um, blog posts and patterns and tutorials. So check the description box if you fall into any of those categories other than you have a sewing machine. If you do have a sewing machine, stick around because I'm going to be showing you step-by-step step how to make a face mask. The face masks that I'm gonna be teaching you how to make today are the contoured ones that go above your nose. You saw me wearing it earlier, not pleated. They are the fitted kind. And these pull up to the top of the like nape of your head, one piece of elastic and another piece of elastic is at the lower part of your neck. I find that that is far more taut and being held in place better than any of the ear loopy ones. So I kind of like how snug it is. It's still very breathable. I am using Quilters Cotton for the mane and then muslin for the lining because use what you have. And I have quarter inch elastic uh, that I used for the strappings. The elastic um is adjustable so once you get it sewn and let's say you're making it for some family members you can bring it to them and have them try it on and the elastic is all one piece so they can just pull it and tie it in a knot and they will have an adjustable elastic band which i think is really cool and something that kind of sets this apart from some of the other ones um, if you're making this for complete strangers, that's also kind of really great because they can make it work for themselves. So let's get to the tutorial and I'll show you just how easy it is to make one of these face masks using your Cricut. Okay, so the first thing that we are gonna do is cut out our fabric according to the instructions. And for the large adult mat, they're gonna have you cut one piece that's 16 by eight and your lining piece that is 16 by seven. The dimensions for the small youth and the youth pattern are on their respective um, design space project pages and they have you cut it out where the length of the grain runs the long length of the mat. So just pay attention to that whenever you are making yours. Here's mine. You can see the lining fabric. Um, the length of the fabric is running the length of the mat. And yeah, so now you just throw that into your machine right side down. You can see I have this one right side down as well. And that way, whenever the machine goes to draw on the stitching line and the pattern numbers, um, it will be drawing on the wrong side of your fabric. Sorry for the glare, but at least you can see that I'm the one filming this and not some intern or robot or anything else. Okay, from Design Space, you want to choose the size of the mask you want to make. Each one has their own dimensions, so if you're not sure, click on each one and it'll give you an estimate of the finished size. I'm making the large adult mask, so I'm going to open that. Then I'm going to click on Make It. 
This will open up the mat preview and you can see where the machine will be cutting. I have a larger mat, so I'm going to change the size of the mat here. And now both of the mask pieces fit on one mat. If you only have a small mat though, don't worry. I'm going to show you how to cut it out with that mat using the same 16 inch long fabric pieces you've already cut. Okay, now we click continue and start to set up our machine. I'm using a maker, so it detects that and then asks which material I'm cutting. I'm using quilters cotton and muslin, so I chose cotton. If you're just making a pattern piece from cardstock, you would choose whatever type of paper you're using. Now Design Space is asking me to make sure I have the machine loaded correctly. I need to insert my water soluble pen and my rotary blade, which I will do now. Once the pen and blade are inserted into the machine, you can load your first mat, which is the one with the lining on it. Now press the arrow button on your machine and it will fully load the mat. When that's ready, press the Cricut logo on your machine and watch it do its thing. Once that mat is done, load the next one, which is the one with your main fabric. Okay, if you don't have a 12 by 24 inch mat, that's okay. Just lay the fabric on your 12 by 12 mat with the extra length hanging off the edge. Load the mat into your machine and let it cut. Just make sure that you have the 12 by 12 mat selected in Design Space, which is the mat preview default anyways. Just don't change it to the 12 by 24 like I did earlier. Once it's done cutting that piece, peel your fabric away from the mat Turn the fabric 180 degrees and line it back up on the top left corner of the mat. Now it will cut the mirror image of the piece you just cut with the remainder of the fabric from the first cut. Make sense? You do the same process with the main fabric as well. But if you have a 24 inch long mat, use that because nothing is better than setting it, walking away and coming back to cut out and marked pattern pieces. All right, everything is cut, now let's sew this thing. And after all your cutting is done, this is what you end up with. You have uh, mirror images of a lining piece and you have mirror images of a main fabric. And you can see that the maker drew in your stitching line. So you don't even have to be that accurate of a sewist, you just follow the line. Um, and it also drew in what the lining pieces are gonna be. So now we can get to sewing. Your very first step is to place the two linings right side together, like this, where the drawing is on the outside of both of them. Line up this curved edge, and you're gonna sew along this edge. Same thing with the um, main fabric. Okay, and I'm using some contrasting threads that you guys can see exactly what's going on here. And then you're going to take these straight edges, you're gonna to go to your iron and you're gonna press this to the wrong side on both sides of your liner, okay? And this is what that looks like. For the uh, main fabric, the pretty fabric, we are going to press them in by that half an inch, just like we did for the liner and then we're gonna press them in again to half an inch, like so. And there's actually already a line on your fabric for where that pressing line should be. So you're making a completely encased edge there where there's no raw edges. Like on this one, there's still raw edges on the outside, which we'll get to in a little bit, but for the main fabric, you are encasing the raw edges and also creating a casing for your elastic to feed through. So do that on both sides of the main fabric piece. Okay, now you're gonna go back to your sewing machine and we are going to stitch the, these, all these edges down. So you're gonna stitch this one just sort of down the middle at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance will be fine. On this one, you wanna stitch really close to this inner pressed edge so that your elastic is gonna have enough space to feed through um, this little casing that you made. So do that on both of these. 
All right, now here's what we have. Completely encased um, raw edges on your mane and then your raw edges turned under and stitched on your lining piece. So I need to go to the iron now and press this curved seam over to one side. And All right, there you have it. I just laid it flat on one side and then put the tip of my iron into here. That's how I was able to um, press it without using a ham or a towel or anything. But now we're gonna go to the machine and we are gonna stitch um, whatever way you pressed your fabric. Like I pressed mine to the left so I am going to top stitch all along this seam here on the left side of the seam so that it'll catch the raw edges that are underneath. So you need to do that on both fabrics. All right, so now we have that little bit of top stitching done and that again is just gonna keep that seam nice and sealed. All right, so now we wanna um, place these right sides together and facing the same direction. So you have you know, the nose portion together and you should see raw seams on this side and raw seams on that side. That's how you know your right sides together. And we are going to stitch all along the uh, top seam, this one where your nose goes, and this one where your chin goes. The edge of your lining is not going to go to the edge of your fabric. So don't struggle to get it to fit. It should fit in nice and easily, and you should have a little bit extra of your main fabric hanging over. All right, and now I've got that completely attached along the top and the bottom and the sides are completely open. And that is where we are gonna turn this whole thing right sides out like so, and then go to your iron, press this whole thing and then top stitch along the top and the bottom to seal those nicely. All right, she is really starting to take shape here as you can see. I think I want to fold this over. Just, I feel like that looks a lot prettier. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna go over and I'm just gonna fold this over and top stitch. I'll still have a casing to send my elastic through, um, but I think it'll be a lot prettier. All right, I'm happier with that. It still fits. Um, you know, if you're making it for people that you know and you know they have like smaller faces, um, feel free to do that. Otherwise, I don't see if it would be bad that it does that. Um, or that it, you know, was open um, on the lining before I folded it over. Um, I just, I don't know. I just wanted it to be more aesthetically pleasing. Okay, so now that we have that, we need to start feeding some elastic. And this is when things get really customizable. <clears throat> Cricut is recommending 20 inches of elastic. So I'm gonna make that at first, and then we can adjust it based on fit afterwards. So cut one 20 inch piece of elastic, which is roughly right there. Perfect. And then you are going to take a safety pin, put it through one end of your elastic. If you have one of those um, elastic threaders, feel free to use that, but we are gonna use what we have. Okay, so now we are gonna take this elastic uh, through the bottom on one side and then continue threading through the top of the other side. So we're gonna go up and then over and then back down. Like so, and now you want to take it to your machine and ensuring that nothing is twisted and that it's all flat all along the insides, you are gonna lay them on top of each other like this and then zigzag or stitch back and forth um, uh, to secure these two ends together. But you wanna do them flat like this. You don't wanna do them like this because then you'll have a lot of bulk. But if you do them flat on top of each other, just like this, um, it'll be nice and flat. All right, like this. You can see it's not very pretty, but if you rotate it so that it goes into one of the casings like this, um, then you'll never see it. All right, and then now you have your uh, face mask that's gonna fit over your head. You can try this on. 
uh, people that you know and adjust the elastic one way or the other, longer or shorter, um, so you can make it truly adjustable. But there you have it. Quick and easy, pretty mask with the Cricut Maker. All right, you guys, so just like that, in a matter of minutes, you have your own custom face mask that you can wear and feel really good about going out and being safe and uh, not getting anybody else infected. And to boot, if you have cute fabric, the masks are cute too. So. I want to thank everyone for watching. I hope you found this tutorial super helpful. If you have any questions about any of it, please leave them in the description box below. I will be back very soon, cranking out the videos lately, giving you guys a place where you can come and escape all the madness um, has given me a whole new purpose to this channel and it's been really, really great. So thank y'all for keeping coming back and watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye.